Welcome to my transparent watercolor tutorial, Misty Lake. This is the companion video to the previous released loose transparent watercolor demonstration video, Misty Lake. The Misty Lake demonstration video was set to music at 3x speed to watch the painting evolve. This version of Misty Lake is a transparent watercolor tutorial which is narrated step by step at normal speed. I'm going to begin this by indicating where the shoreline are going to be and I'm going to indicate where the tree shapes are going to be by just using a very simple vertical line. It's a very simple sketch and a good way to approach this would be to, to do a value sketch up front. Um, for this particular painting I have in, in mind what I plan to do and I'm just going to start with a simple sketch on my painting and do direct painting and develop this as I go. So I'm still indicating some tree shapes, a distant shoreline, and then a distant tree line. And I'm just doing very light uh, pencil marks just to indicate where that's going to be. I've decided I want to preserve some highlighted areas right in front of the shoreline between where the shoreline and the reflection come together. There tends to be uh, a highlighted line that develops there. So to do that I'm going to use this masking fluid pen before I begin to paint. I'm using a very simple palette for this painting. Three colors, royal blue, pyrrole red, and sap green. I like to use sap green with a little bit of pyrrole red mixed in to take the rawness off. The more I add, the more it takes it towards neutral. When I add royal blue to the sap green, it takes it to the cool side and it's very good for uh, distant colors. I'm going to begin this painting by working on a distant tree line with a cool mixture of sap green, pyrrole red, and royal blue with a little bit more influence of the royal blue to give it a, a cool coolness to the color and it works very well for a distant tone. So I, I applied the wash on the tree line and it's still wet and very workable and I'm coming back in with a brush and the paint and give it a suggestion of treetops there. It's not uh, a smooth mountain uh, edge to it. I've given it this very erratic uh, edge which suggests that there's trees there. Now I've come back with a spray bottle, a fine mist spray, and I'm softening the, that wash to give it this nice distant misty effect. I'm going to carry that tone down into uh, the water where you would get some reflection. And then I'm using this uh, fine mist spray bottle to um, make that color flow. And I'm going to use this spray bottle a lot in this painting. It's very loose, very watery application of the paint. One of the things you need to be aware of when you have uh, these loose, uh, very liquid flowing washes on your paper is you have to be aware of where the bead of water is and uh, pick that up with your brush or blot it with a Kleenex so that you don't get undesirable backwashes. I've dried that tree line and now I'm beginning to apply a wash uh, to give the suggestion of pine trees. I'm going to put these pine trees in. Again, it's a suggestion of trees. I'm not rendering these. Uh, I'm going to come in here with a fine mist spray I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to repeat this process as many times as I feel I need to until I feel that I have uh, the suggestion of the trees and the land and the, and the uh, shorelines that I'm after. One of the things I find interesting about working with a fine mist spray bottle is my initial application of paint is often wet on the dry and then I come back with a fine mist spray bottle and any a paint I apply after that is working wet and wet. So normally where you're going to work wet and wet you would wet your paper with clear water, come in with paint and let it flow 
across the uh, the wash that you've put down. When I come in uh, with wet on dry and then hit it with a spray bottle, I have some control and harder edges that you don't get when you're just strictly working wet and wet. But then you transition from that wet on dry to a wet on wet uh, working surface. As I paint these tree shapes, I try and drag some of that tone down into the water to uh, suggest that there's reflections of the trees or the landmass. And um, this water bottle with a fine spray softens those edges and, and helps give some direction to the flow of the paint. At this point, I've built up a number of layers of um, suggested trees that I've softened with a spray bottle and then I've dried. So now I'm going to start to come in with a little darker value and a finer point on my brush, a little heavier paint, and try and give a little bit more uh, substance to these trees. Now this, this pigment's a little thicker than what I've been using and I'm going to hit it with that spray bottle but it's going to hold its shape a little bit more and uh, I've taken care to try and really hit the bottom and let that flow down and give a little bit more structure to the tree shapes. Here I'm doing the same thing with this darker value and working some of these larger tree shapes here uh, more so in the foreground. One of the things you want to keep in mind when you're working with something like trees and tree shapes is you want to have variety. You don't want um, all the trees to be the same height. You, you want to start and stop the shapes and break them up so maybe they're not continual. Um, have trees start lower than other trees. You want some to be skinny and some to be fatter. Um, the spacing between them needs to vary. So a couple trees maybe close together and then another one farther apart. But it's this kind of variety that creates interest. It's um, not very good design to have one tree sitting by another tree the same height and width and the same spacing and another tree and another tree all with the same height and the same level of finish and the same spacing it's very um, boring and just doesn't make for good design here I'm drawing some of those darker values into the reflections in the water And again, I still like to soften those and give some direction with a Fima spray bottle. I don't always use a Fima spray bottle when I paint, but when I'm doing this type of a composition and this subject matter, I think it's a, a, a really nice thing to use and really gives a good effect that complements um, the type of painting that I'm doing. I want that distant tree line to stand out a little bit more so I'm coming in with a, another wash that's just a little bit darker, still a very cool mixture um, to hit the tree tops and then I'm just going to hit it with the uh, a fine mist spray to soften it up a little bit. But it makes the uh, tree line just a bit more pronounced. Now I'm going to come in and start to use a darker value tone to indicate the shoreline and those land masses. When you're working on a landscape, you want to have somewhere in your composition, you need to have a horizontal plane. That's just how things are in a landscape and it helps balance out your composition. 
taking this darker value here around the uh, uh, landmass here that's in the foreground helps bring that forward and makes it feel like it's uh, more in the foreground as opposed to the middle ground of that that uh, landmass behind it. Here I'm applying this darker tone to the uh, landmass that's more in the foreground and then taking that same uh, value tone down into the waters uh, to suggest those reflections. And again soften with a bottle. This painting here I probably use the finest sprayer um, the most that I that I ever would use in a painting. I really max it out here but it just fits the nature of what the painting is I feel. Here I'm applying a darker value again to some treetops to make them stand out a bit more. Keep in mind I this process I repeat multiple times uh, as I work through this painting and um, I dry my paper many many times through this process uh, as I build up each layer. And sometimes it, it just takes a few seconds to dry the area I'm working on and, and then I want to come back and put another layer over top of it. Other times it can take a little bit when you really have the paper soaked. Now I've reached a point where I'm ready to remove those uh, highlights that I preserved at the beginning of the painting process when I put down the masking fluid. So to do that I'm using a uh, crepe kneaded rubber pickup eraser. And there wasn't a lot of area I masked, just little touches of highlight along the shoreline to keep some a uh, little bit of sparkle, a little bit of light on that shoreline. And some of those areas I don't want to be as the 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 white white of the paper. Some come in with a very light wash to tone some of those areas down. But I still keep a little bit of the sparkle there. And that's my painting Misty Lake. This has been the narrated step-by-step -step tutorial which is the companion to my demonstration version of this same painting. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.